Up until recently, cancer has been a disease presumed to be a preserve of the rich. Yet when it came to the scourge, it spared not a single soul from across the social divide, affecting both the young and old, rich and poor. The disease is yet to be demystified, even as cancer cases grow rampant. I know the handling of cancer in Kenya has been a challenge. The reason why it's been a challenge is, number one, the perennial problem we have is that we diagnose cancer late. Diagnosing cancer late, of course, is because of many reasons. One of them being that uh, our healthcare system still has uh, various challenges, and those challenges include inadequate health personnel who are able to make the right diagnosis at the right time. Our healthcare system also is very dependent on out-of-pocket uh, expenses in terms of meeting, meeting their medical bills. And you know, with the downturn in the economy and Kenyans are struggling, so their health doesn't become a priority, and especially for aspects like screening. And the moment we diagnose cancer late, the treatment, number one, becomes more radical, it becomes more expensive. In Kenya, the most common cancer is cancer of the breast. Nimefurahia kukuja kwa sababu mara nyingi huwa nasikia sometimes uchungu kwa matiti mpaka naogopa ama nimedevelop ku cancer. Kwa hivyo niliposikia kuna screening huko nikafurahia nikawa tayari kabisa kuja kuangaliwa ili nijue vile niko. The clinical presentation of uh, breast cancer are numerous. Now the first thing that the patient may see is a skin change over the breast or there may be change in contour of the breast. Normally it is blood discharge from the breast. We have four different stages of cancer of the breast. Now the first stage is a stage whereby the lump is just beginning and normally it is less than two centimeters in diameter. That is stage one. Now stage two, is when the lump is growing bigger, when it is between two and five centimeters in diameter. Now stage three is when it is above five centimeters in diameter, and it is approaching the skin of the breast, or it's approaching the chest wall, uh, or overlying the breast. Now stage four is when the cancer has gone to other areas uh, outside the breast. It may have moved to the left, or uh, to the opposite uh, breast, or it may have gone to the liver, or it may have metastasized to the bone. Naomi is a middle-aged mother of four and wife to George Kenagwa. A nurse by profession, she has fought the illness and won the battle. My stage, it was early. That is why I've been cured. Already I'm cured. I don't have the cancer cell because it's, it was in early stage. Me, me, what I'm telling the mothers outside there, to come to the hospital early, to be checked about cancer. If they, they are found with cancer early, it is treatable. So right now, me, I'm enjoying my life with my family because the cancer cells are gone and I'm leading a normal life. A visit to their house reveals the relations of the close-knit family and the role they play towards their loved one's recovery. Mgonjwa wako ama partner wako akiwa mgonjwa kaa na yeye na namna hii. Huyu alipotoka hospitali bibi yangu akitoka hospitali mimi ndio nilikuwa nafanya kila kitu. Kwa na mnyoa nywele kwa sababu nywele ilikuwa ina, inaanguka. Aya, makucha hawezi kata. Mimi nilikuwa na mkata. Unataka kula hii, unataka kula hii, ni mimi tu nitamuuliza leo unataka kula nini? Leo unataka namna gani? Ukiwacha kidogo bila kumuattend naye unajua mgonjwa ataona kama huyu naye anitaki sasa. Lakini ukionyesha love, mapenzi 
unampenda na you can support her the way even she is hakuna shida ile love ulikuwa nayo mbeleni mpaka udabo ikue mara mbili as a first child and being told about cancer and we've not had it in our family it was really shocking um the first thing i did was to to absorb all that in and wonder if i should tell my sisters if i should not tell them but i eventually decided to tell them because they had to know one way or the other but the support i gave my mom then was emotional support and i was able to take care of her i hope to a level of which i could um i tried to do what i could do best however not all stories have a happy ending the fight with cancer is laborious, strenuous, and a most expensive endeavor, as another cancer victim tells us. Sophie Mangera, a high school teacher within Nakuru municipality, is a victim of breast cancer. The mother of two was diagnosed with the disease some years back, and since then has been fighting it. On Christmas Day, on the eve of Christmas Day, and... We were just lazing around because the doctors that time the hospitals were closed. My mom also had pressure that had to be contained before she would get any treatment. So I was like touching, you know, because I was idle doing nothing. Then it's like, aye, there's a lump somewhere here. Then I didn't want to tell my sister. So I kept it. But I really got scared, you know, because then I said, okay, cancer, you know, that is the first thing that came to my mind. And then the following day, yeah, I just said, don't let me tell my sister because it was like, it was going to getting into me. I told her, Ruth, well, there's a lamp here. Then my sister was asking me, no, a lamp, you're joking. So when she touched, actually, it was a lamp. So we got scared. So the three first tests, I think, came out negative, and we had all the hopes, you know, crossing our fingers. Probably it's not cancer. So when the results of the co-biopsy came, that is when reality now dawned. So Dr. Sike looked at the results, and then he told me, well, we thought it was just a mass, and this thing has turned out to be cancer, you know. So it's like, eh, doctor, am I dying? <laughs> you know, actually, that's the question I asked him. They said, no, this thing has been detected early, and it is treatable. So I imagined all the wild things that I've been hearing. Oh, my hair would be off, my nails would turn dark, I'll vomit or whatever. But uh, maybe what I've actually... Uh, experienced as uh, I undergo the treatment are just two major effects of the treatment that is I lost my hair and uh, my nails have actually turned black so they have stripes and they look like the zebra stripes and maybe I was wondering now my hair it was long it actually I felt it but then I just told myself well it's just for a little while and of course, the, that is where we go to. Now, maybe it being private, that I say maybe not a public institution like Kenyatta, the facilities, medication is accessible. You just sit and uh, they take your treatment sheet and all the medications are available there. But it's quite expensive. So, I'm not being... so I think my son, if he had more than my daughter, and she's the younger one, so they were asking, Mommy, what's happening? So I tell Brenda, Mommy, I have a lamp on my breast and it's going to be operated on and I'm going to sleep in hospital. So they couldn't understand why their mom is going to be cut and why can't that lamp stay there? Then I told them, no, it's a very bad lamp and if it stays, Mommy will be very sick. A patient has to undergo six chemotherapy sessions for the disease to be removed from the body. In some cases, the doctor advises on a follow-up of radiotherapy to make sure that the tumor bed has been fully flushed out from the body. Managing the disease remains a challenge as many of the facilities are not available locally. She therefore has to travel to Nairobi periodically for her chemotherapy treatment. Thanks to the Khan Hospital, they have a, very, have a very good facility actually for chemotherapy. So there's a chemo unit, so when you go for the treatment, that is where we go to. Now, 
maybe it being private that I say maybe not a public institution like Kenyatta the facilities medication is accessible you just sit and uh, they take your treatment sheet and all the medications are available there but it's quite expensive so I've not been able to socialize with my friends as before and then maybe not really active especially at my workplace so that I'm not that energetic as I was before I started the chemo treatment and I'm taking it positively This is my story, my life after cancer treatment. I had breast cancer, left the left breast. And uh, what was done was actually not mastectomy, but uh, breast conservation, uh, whereby we just removed the lump that was affected. And then after that, I started my treatment. I went through chemo, my hair fell off, my nails were black. It's like, who am I? But I'm back. My hair is back, my nails are back to normal. It has been a challenge, but um, I think I've gone through, I'm back to myself, gone back to my workstation. I do the normal household duties that I can do, prepare my children, go to school. No, I'm fine, I think it's okay with me. The journey to recovery isn't an easy one. Cancer treatment is very expensive in the country. Also, facilities such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy machines can only be accessed in major health centers within the country. By and large, all those private radiotherapy facilities are not accessible to the local Kenyans because they are very expensive. The least that you can pay for a session of radiotherapy is 80,000, which is far beyond the reach of most Kenyans. So if the government can provide some of these radiotherapy machines to the provinces in order to decongest Kenyatta and also make it easy for patients to access some of these facilities. Because as it is right now, it means that patients have to go all the way to Nairobi and most of the uh, radio sessions, especially in breast cancer, take around 25 days uh, uh, in total. Now, that is a bit challenging because they have to look for a place to stay in Nairobi uh, leave alone uh, raising that money and if at all there's any complication again for them to be seen outside the cancer unit becomes a big challenge. Margaret Kamande is a cancer patient who has been accessing her chemotherapy sessions at the Rift Valley Provincial General Hospital. Bookings for a session are made early and only a few patients can be accommodated in the cancer ward. <laughs> Gikara, <laughs> Igacho <laughs> No, what we are going to do is to do it. We are going to be to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are to be able to do Na ninasikia vizuri juu, suwe sikurara vile nilikuwa na laraga. Na sasa ninaendelea na kasi yangu, ule mugonjwa, ninasa kumwambia kwamba. Asifikiria sana hali ya ugonjwa. Akijua tu asikae, aende sivitari haraka, 
atapona juu ya kwanza matibabu mapema kama ajaka atatibiwa na atapona hivyo ninaweza kumwambia akiona tu dalili hata asigoje dalili hata kupimwa aende apimwe akipimwa juu yako naye aende usi haraka atatibiwa na atapona haraka All in all, all types of cancer are curable if detected early enough. However, some cancer patients exhibit no physical symptoms, therefore posing a challenge in the disease's detection and diagnosis. This surgery is curative when you get cancer in the early stages, that is in stage one. And here we are talking about getting out the tumor the way it is with a negative uh, margin that is margin free of tumor. Now in this case, you can actually get rid of the tumor completely. As you go up the staging, that is stage two, early stage two, you can still cure the tumor with surgery. The danger for recurrence lies rife if disease cells of the tumor are left on the affected area. Elizabeth Ndungu founded the hospice in memory of her late father, who died of prostate cancer. From the long suffering endured by him, she vowed to help others avoid going through the same fate. Nakuru Hospice, being one of the hospices in the country, actually the major role is to, to implement or to provide palliative care for the terminally ill persons. These are persons who have whose life has been limited by non-communicable diseases like cancer. And therefore, we concentrate mainly on those who have been diagnosed and have been tested with cancer or any other disease like HIV, all terminal illnesses. Once you are diagnosed with one, then palliative care starts from there. And that is our role. Palliative care is a program that involves several things. It involves pain management, it involves uh, control of symptoms that normally arise as a result of the illness that the person has. We also have psychosocial support, this is counseling and spiritual care. We also have trainings in palliative care. This is where uh, we train caregivers and uh, nurses or health professionals in palliative care. We have realized that most of the doctors and nurses 